Hold on, it's Claude Jones and Real Talk. Hi, my name is Claude Jones, Claude Jones Presents. We're here in the house of Mr. William Jackson, who did a good community service for over 25 years of business. But he had a lot of good information he want to pass on to people that some people don't know. So I'm going to let William Jackson tell you some information that may prosper you in the future for your intellect and your spirituality. So I want you to listen very carefully to this man because he has a lot of knowledge to give you. And what you do with it is up to you. This is my show. My beliefs may be different or not different, but it's up to you to understand his beliefs and maybe your beliefs as well. It'll help you out. So more persons to do, introduce Mr. William Jackson himself to tell you about knowledge he got to pass on to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm William Jackson. Um, at present, I want to introduce you to some things that I have over the years, in, shall we say, indoctrinated, learned, I studied, um, went from here to there, and found out and uh, have made discoveries and so forth in regard to our Creator. I wanted to bring you some knowledge, or bring you up to date on what I have learned so far, because uh, the Bible speaks of so many things that we ourselves have been. Um, entwined by. We as a people have tried to learn it and we've tried to go along with programs and we've tried to understand it the way someone else have written it or translated it and uh, we've gone to, shall we say, churches, synagogues and uh, mosques and so forth in an effort to try and understand our Creator. Our Creator do have a mission of uh, making certain things known to you, and uh, that mission is all entwined in uh, knowledge, and the knowledge in itself gives you the power. We ourselves have not gotten, uh, shall we say, an understanding of the knowledge of our Creator, because all of us seem to translate it as we want to, as we feel like it is comfortable for us to do. So we've taken one name and we've, uh, or the name of our Creator, and we've uh, sliced it and diced it and did everything that we possibly could to it. But we still are left without having knowledge of our Creator because our Creator says in uh, Daniel 12, 12th chapter, um, verse 4 through 9, gives you a complete understanding of those themselves who is not knowledgeable. All right, at present, I do want to clarify some scriptures that uh, is in the Bible, but it's in code. And this code, we feel that we have broken this code to uh, better, and we can better understand it if we understand that there are two things going on at one time. The two things that's going on at one time to us is uh, not knowledgeable to us because we don't give that any consideration. But if you take the Bible and dissect it into two different, shall we say, resurrections, then we will come up with the first key or the first sacred secret of the heavens. Whereas the first resurrection is going on at this time, and the second resurrection is going on at this time. And if you take that and put it before the throne of God, which is to you the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of all the words that you speak, because we try to put or make a creature out of God, whereas God says, I put my spirit in you. 
it means that these words that I, that we speak are words of God, which some verses tell you that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So if we understand certain things that uh, the words that we speak are really God words, so consequently we are the ones that is causing people to either give them life or we're causing the dead death and destruction. The power of everything is given unto us all is in the tongue because we are able to give life and take life. If you feel like somebody done you wrong in some kind of way, then you can you will say in your heart, your spirit will guide you towards murdering, killing, or getting even, things of that nature. If you feel like you wanted to bestow your blessings upon that particular individual or any individual, you have the words, you find the words there that will cause you to bless that person or persons. So you have two resurrections going on at one time. You have one resurrection that is, uh, should we say, doing something good to you and one resurrection is going doing something bad to you. The reason why I say that is because even in the Psalms of the 23rd chapter, which we mostly recite at funerals, where we talk about the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want and make a people lie down in green pastures and restore my soul and, and all of that. But we also get to the point of, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I shall fear none that is evil. That's one kind of people there. The Most High is letting you know that there is a people that is evil, or that people can do evil. All they have to do is utilize the words to make themselves evil. And they have the power over that. So they become a spirit of whether they want to do good or evil. So that's what we all have the power to do. We can become nice to people or we can become evil to people. So yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you should fear none that is with you. Why? Because you have your God with you. What does that mean? You're walking around with your God with you, but you can turn into an evil spirit at any time, and all it takes is somebody do you wrong or do something that is not agreeable with you. When I say not agreeable with you, it's being nice words because if somebody do that, they will be more than likely, it's called pissing you off. So consequently, like I said, we, we know that we can do certain things to each other because we have the power to do it. We can wage war one with another just as ISIS is, 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 is attacking America now and, and all the other cities in the world because they, they have an evil plot to do certain things. And you got people who's, who are saying that I got my God with me, and we're going to fight you. We're going to put you out of commotion or commission too. So you got a battle going on all down through each uh, incident that is going on in the world. If we find ourselves um, becoming enticed to do certain things to people, we will do it. And if we don't, we'll be nice to them and give them a blessing. This is what we all have the power to do. This is a God-given power to do. You're in the image of likeness in God to do it. Now, to clarify something else to you, which is a sacred secret, we think that uh, uh, Genesis 1 verse 1 is something that happened years and years and millions of years, thousands of years, hundreds of years ago, which says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, that's a mistranslation because if we translate the Bible from what it was to what it is, we will learn that in the beginning, as it is cr created in the Bible, in the beginning, is it really means for us to begin to create ourselves. 
into the heavens and on earth. If we ourselves begin to create ourselves in the heavens and on the earth, then we ourselves will be heavenly inhabitants or heavenly dwellers or born with heavenly knowledge so that you can understand that you are being associated with the throne of your creator. I say throne because each one of us do have a throne. If we are made in the image and likeness of God, then the heavenly God is a great white throne. And if we ourselves want to understand our creator and our God, and understand that that the only way that you can see this great white throne is for you to look at people that have the words of the Most High with them. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear none that is evil. Why? Because you have your God with you. If you have your God with you, then you are not afraid of the evil one. And the evil one will strike, but you will be able to defend because you yourself have become knowledgeable that knowledge is power. When you walk with knowledge and with power, then everything that someone will say in regard to some evil that they're going to perpetrate against you, then you won't put yourself into a, a situation where you yourself are afraid. Because, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you should not be a nun that is evil or an evil person because you have your God with you to perhaps save you from all of the um, frightful things that we ourselves will put ourselves through because we being a people that is being defeated, we, would, we had to be frightened so far or so much that we had to submit to a superior words that were speak, spoken by someone. And just as you find words on the higher level, you'll find words on the lower level, or on the middle level and the lower level. But basically it's words on the high level, which we call the crown, the one who walk with the crown on their head with the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding, and the uncrowned. And the uncrowned is the one that don't know God at all, and they're just accepting uh, the gods themselves that they have been uh, given while they were she was dismissed from the throne of God. They were, um, they'll walk around with that, um, in that, she would say, lesser God. And yes, there are lesser gods because if you read, read commandment one, the commandment says, I am the Lord your God, and you should not have no other God, but which of the other gods means that even God knows that there are other gods. Yes, there are other gods. God said you don't need to bring them back before me because those gods have, as shall we say, have no power. They have, they are wood and stone. They see not, walk not, and talk not. Wow. That meaning that I look at the little gods that we have here in the land, and they do not see. They do not walk, they do not talk, they do not speak or do anything that is or for themselves that we can say that we can call them almighty and omnipotent and all this and be able to see this go forth or being done right in front of our eyes. By seeing certain things that happen to us right before our eyes uh, really puts us in a predicament whereby we are, uh, shall we say, a conquered people or, an or the conquered people, people who conquered the unconquered people. And by conquering them, you just have the basic knowledge of God to do that because uh, like I said, the words, the code, the code words to God is that every word you speak is God. So if you say, no, nah, I don't believe you, 
that's your God out of your spirit saying, I don't believe you, God. Well, then you're denying this, that that person have a spirit of God in them. Why? Because, yes, your judgment. You all of a sudden have made a judgment that they themselves are not a God. And your God say, every word you speak is me. If every word you speak is me, then if you got lesser words to speak, then you're going to speak them. Just as the ones who rule got higher words that they speak and they carry on the higher uh, languages of uh, ruling over the people and making laws over the people and guiding the people and bringing them into uh, submission. So consequently, that's why you have every country that have that is existing have a leader, and uh, you have to follow the leader because they are guiding you and guiding your direction or your destiny. So now, if we ourselves is going to understand uh, the, the keys of God, the, the keys of David, the keys of knowing showing and flowing, which means, yeah, there's a first resurrection going on at one time and there's a second resurrection going on at the same time. And right now people are participating in the second resurrection because that is where they're at. They, um, the Bible refers to them as outside of the dogs, the fornicators, the liars, the adulteresses, and and uh, all of those that want to carry on all types of immoral intercourse and things of that nature. So anyway, it's, it's, it's all doubled down to unrighteousness. So there's a righteousness going on in the earth and an unrighteousness. And the unrighteousness is, is all the evil that one can think of to do, and they do, and carry it on. So consequently, why is we ourselves as a people that would gather knowledge to, that will liberate us from our captors, the one who have imprisoned us and, and have uh, kept us captive for years, if we ever come to the point where we ourselves will take back our servants and make them our servants and treat them like they treated us, or we can treat them good too. Now, in order for that to happen, it takes a transformation of your mind because now the Caucasian is going to have a problem with some black person telling them that you are now my servants and you are now subject to the king and you are now, you don't have, you, you're going to have to do it my way and you're going to have to do it in such a way that, shall we say, we are human beings and we should want to learn how to love one another, but guess what? They're going to have some evil thoughts in their mind. They're going to try and do evil. They're going to try, and, just like Obama is in the White House right now, and he could have done something more for black people than he could, but he couldn't. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give him the power or pass any of his bills, or pass, which the, he had to go through or another way because Congress and Senate then all of a sudden decided that they don't like him and they're going to openly discriminate against him. And you can see it, and they did it right before our eyes. And now they want to take everything that Obama did as soon as they get another Caucasian in office, as soon as they get that done, then they're going to uh, rewrite history and take everything away that Obama did and they're going to call it another name and it's not going to be Obamacare anymore because this is the way that the conquering people act when they themselves want to rule over you and when they rule over you they rule over you with words and these words in itself is some things that we ourselves have not been able to officially put back on them and put it in such a way that they become our servants and we no longer become theirs. Because they are right now looking all over the world for new servants. 
They got us to come over here and do up the land for us and build up America. And we built up America, and now they got Chinese making up just about everything that uh, you see right now bought, bought, uh, bought in America. You see it made in China. So it, it means that, yes, these people went and got them some new servants, some new slaves, and they paying them a little or nothing. Because the Chinese, they actually, they actually uh, make an income of eighty-seven dollars a month. Now we wouldn't be working for stuff like that. That's why they went and go on over there and got them some new slave servants or new slaves. So we, as a people, got to understand that yes, in order to do certain things, we have to take possession of our power. What we do have is all the gold in Africa and the diamonds and all of this. We have to first go and take or claim what's ours, especially in Africa, because the Caucasian is over there doing the same thing. The Indians are over there doing the same thing. The Russians are over there doing the same thing. Every nation in the world is over there telling them this, we want to get all your diamonds and all your gold, and we're going to take it over home, at our home and sell it at. We're going to get it for little or nothing and go back home and sell it for something, which means they're making money off of your resources. They're taking it. It's free to them just about. What is $2,000 for to someone that that makes 40 million or, or even a billion. What is that kind of money to them? Nothing. So they can go and get all types of resources that they buy for little or nothing and they get it from our country, Africa, and they take everything that is there and try and, and should we say, make as much money as they possibly can off of it. So what are we to do as a people? We have to find us a, a products, goods, and services that we ourselves can produce and create and put into society and put it on the shelf and make it something to, uh, to ourselves because the monies that we make at present does not go into our community and come out like it should. It should go into our community and go through them hand to hand and hand to hand and hand to hand and hand to hand and then come out. Because everybody should be making money off of each other in the community. We all have to learn how that we are a certain people with abilities. Just as you see uh, mountains made of mortar and brick and stones and this and that and even castles built on top of mountains and stuff. If you look over in England, you'll see it. Rich people got, oh, I want you to take my service and I'll have them go up there on top of the mountain and build me a castle. And yes, they got enough people to put people to work to do that. That's, uh, therefore, you, you are able to sit up and establish a, a way of living or a standard of living for the community because you're going to pay them a certain amount of money. And they're going to take, and if you don't have stores and things for them to buy things, then you're going to lose out on that. Because, yes, we have a store over here at the barbershop to cut hair. You, have, uh, you should have a clothing store, a grocery store, and all these things so that you can turn money over into your community. Right now in our community, we see bodegas in the black community. You see bodegas and uh, Chinese and a um, few other people from other nations. And they are right here and they're taking that same money out of your, your community that they make a living off. And they take that same money and send it off to their people in the, in the foreign lands. And um, it should have been turned over in our community first before they did all of that. It should have made it should have made two or three times into our community, and then if they want to send something out to some other state or some other or some other place, then you do that. 
But you're not saying not do it, it's not to put yourself, but you got to put a plan together. And that plan together includes all of us, because if we don't find ourselves making a decent income with money being passed from here to here to here to here in the community, you're going to find some sitting up just all of a sudden they got evil thoughts to say, some, I'm going to go and take what money you did make. <laughs> you don't work for it. Somebody going to take what money that you did make because they feel like you, they, their opportunity did not come. You got all of this that you got to deal with in your community. And in order to make your community better, you got to make, you got to we say, find something for everybody to do. And like I said, it don't take much for some for things to be done. We can do that. We can do it at our leisure because, yeah, everybody can do something. We all have special talents. Just as you see a plumber, a carpenter, or other things that is in the country, electricians and, and, and car mechanics and, and things of this nature in your community, you got a whole bunch of things. You can create some more and, and, and invent some more because, yes, there are attain things that we have been created by us and we have, have um, should we say, made trains and, and cars, trolley cars and, and, we, and, and things like this that, that came along at a time that helped the generation of people grow from one state of mind to another state of mind. And we as a people should learn how to come from one state of mind to another state of mind. Therefore, in bringing you in the knowledge of the first resurrection and the second resurrection is bringing you to a knowledge of understanding that, yeah, there's two things going on at, at the same time. You either being in the second resurrection, whereas you'll be it is generally called the, the valley of the shadow of death where you do all types of evil or it may be uh, called darkness just as the bible says at the beginning darkness covered the earth if darkness is in the earth then it is time that light must be shown and the right light not to some old dumb light that's just to fill our ears or to appease our ears but we need to have the truth presented so that we ourselves can come from not knowing to knowing. All right, and this will conclude this chapter on knowing and not knowing, our first introduction to the first resurrection and the second resurrection, which we can explain at another time. And we as a people that uh, have come into knowledge or want to come into knowledge can understand that uh, I keep my name, William Jackson. I am what you would call a king priest, a king of righteousness because I've learned the righteousness of God and I also know the unrighteousness of God. And God is in control of both because all of us are entwined into the knowledge of we either know or we don't know. So when we get to the point where we ourselves will come to full knowledge of God, then we can erase that verse out of the Bible that says, my people are dead from lack of knowledge. And we as a people got to come from being one not knowing to one that is knowing. And that will be yours to, as a blessing from God because here I'm speaking it. And I know it because I done researched it and I've, I've went and dug up and dig it, dig this place and that place and found stuff that is necessary in order for our minds to grow, our hearts to grow. And we as a people can become a spirit of spirit of truth because we should learn how to speak one truth one to another and not just a bunch of crap, a bunch of unnecessary talk, a bunch of nothing that, that gets us nowhere. In the meantime, you are 
obediently serving evil. In the valley of the shadow of death, you are serving it because that's your reward from God. If you're going to be a spirit that's going to take yourself away or fade away from God, that is called Abaddon. Abaddon just means, yeah, go on and fade away. You talk yourself right out of it, and yes, there are people that will talk themselves right out of the blessings of God. And we as a people got to learn that we have the power to either bless people or we can curse them. We can make them give, try and give them life, or we can try and take their life away. We got all of that power, and all of that still is in the power of the tongue or the mouth. All we got to do is open our mouth, and yes, there are people that will go and do our biddings, and we put in the money behind it. Yes, it shall be done quicker, when without question. You understand? So we have got to, got to understand where we're at, what we're doing, and how we're doing it. And by doing so, we can become a better people because the better people on earth can make a better earth. And the better earth comes about when we ourselves try and do one thing, uh, uh, which is to try and do better. You see some people try and carry on a Christmas spirit, and they tell you, but this is phony. It's phony because it's only for one day of a, of a year and then all right we, we put on that hat and now we can take that hat off and go on back to being evil when you see this happening in the society we as a people got to understand that yes our day has come our redemption is here and it comes up with you having or obtaining the knowledge the wisdom and the understanding so that you can Get up off your knees and start walking before God perfectly. And notice I said perfectly because you've been a people that you, the society has told you that you are not perfect. Yeah, ain't nobody's perfect. But you're in the image and likeness of God and God is perfect. So consequently, you're telling a lie before God and you need to stop lying. Because God wants you to become perfect or to perfect your ways. Yes, you can do wrong, but yes, you still got to get your behind up and perfect your ways. Don't let that happen again. Don't do that again. Learn from your mistakes because you're perfect before God because you're made in the image and likeness of God. And God is resting right now. And we don't want to interrupt the peace and the rest of God with a bunch of crap that we ourselves have been contaminated ourselves to the point that we cannot perfect ourselves and correct ourselves to become uh, better people. And you owe it to yourself to become a better people and I want to see that, to it that you at least get the knowledge and if you reject it and it'll be your evil behind, going on out to do your evilness. And yes, we'll all be watching you, and we'll see how far your evil is going to take you, because basically that's where you have, uh, that's the pathway that you have chosen. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear none that is evil, because those who want to walk with God with us will walk with God with us. Those who want will say, excuse me, later hood, I don't want to be bothered, I don't want to hear F-U-C-K it. And therefore, like I said, that's your reward. Your reward is, you have, you're given a reward, shall we say, that will match your own stupidity. And regardless of what we're talking about or what you hear, hear somebody say, remember that Every time you sit up and open your mouth or every time you listen to someone else open their mouth, they're giving you something that is to match your stupidity. And you'll be a sucker. You'll be someone that will go along with the program. So it's up to you. You either get to know or 
or you just won't know. And those that don't know, only can say bye. Because you make that choice. Those that will, that do want to do right, I want to say that, yes, I'll be back on again, and we'll talk again, and we'll make it known some more sacred secrets of the kingdom because you can't digest all of what I've taken 40 years to learn in one session. It's going to take a while to learn it, but yes, I'll be back again in the name of the Most High. Hallelujah. This is yours truly, William Jackson, coming to you from, I would call myself in the holy place, because I am a Holy Spirit, because I have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding that the Most High has bestowed upon me and ordained me to bring it to you. You say, yes, this is it. Come out of the pit. And if you want to come out, then come out. If not, then you're going to stay right there and do your evil stuff till you die. That's you. That's the word of the Most High. Thank you. Mr. Jackson. Yeah. How you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, you said a lot of interesting stuff. I uh, really like hearing more stuff you have to say. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day you said something. I want to uh, recap what you said when I was a little younger. About the stupor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and can you... Say a little bit about the stupor situation with people. Well, all right, to give you an understanding of stupor, it's like uh, we ourselves uh, have to understand that the Most High, when we read the Bible, the Most High tells you that um, I'm going to scatter you to the four corners of the earth and uh, these four corners of the earth have names. And if we understand the names that the Most High has given you from, from uh, uh, the beginning of time, and that's just like the Most High said, yeah, I formed and fashioned the earth, and I formed and fashioned it by creating certain things. And that's why I said to us that we uh, either have knowledge or, or wisdom of God, or we don't. If we don't have the knowledge and wisdom of God, then God has migrated you from the knowledge of the, the heavens to a stupid heaven. Now, the Most High do have a stupid heaven, and that is in the Bible, in the book of uh, um, Daniel, that speaks about uh, Orion. Orion is the uh, heaven that that most high has a sign, a co a cosign for us to go into a valley of stupidity where we do dumb, stupid, and silly and unwise things. That's why I say yes. You've been you either have the knowledge of God or you don't. Because if you don't, you're in the valley of the shadow of death. And that whole thing is translated into stupid because you either become stupid with the dumb, stupid, and the unwise decisions and things that you make, and you can't blame nobody else but your, your interpretation of your life, the way you have created yourself. You either done it in a dumb, stupid, and an unwise way, or you're going to to migrate out of that into have becoming smart enough not to do that anymore. So you have a migration of stupor and a migration of smartness. If you come out of the stupid stupid heaven and come into the smart heaven, then you won't have to uh, suffer what they do over here in the stupid heaven, because. Yes, uh, the great tribulation is going on at all times in the valley of stupor. People don't know it, but they've been stupefied. And God created this for disobedient people or for people that don't want to get to know God. Because they're, just as I'm saying, what I am saying is like uh, some people want to get to know God and some people don't. And 
they're trying to put a body in God, and God said, don't put no body in me. I am a name. So if you understand God, then you understand that the Most High is just names. So we create things through the names of God. We make things happen through God's names. And we take God's names and they become something in the earth rather than nothing in the earth. The something in the earth is not going and making an image like the people did, say for instance, in, in the biblical story there when Moses brought the children out of Israel, he brought them out and all of a sudden he said, I'm going to go up here on the mountain, I'll be right back. And go up on the mountain and, and all of a sudden the people say, oh, let's make us a God that uh, brought us out of Egypt and all of that. And, and you know, and the next thing you know, they done created a God of calf. And a calf and, and painted that gold and say the calf was the one that brought them out and all that crap. Now how stupid is that? That's that's dumb, stupid, and unwise as a people. You know what I mean? That's not a wise thing to do. That's not a good thing to do. So you got you had to be really, really, really stupid. Yeah, you're gonna get redeemed through one way and you're gonna come up and say it was done another way. That is breaking commandment 10, which is that you shouldn't bear false witness against your neighbor. You're going to bear false witness that here is some calf that you just made who brought you out of slavery. And how stupid and dumb is that? That's why I said we, uh, there are people that, uh, like I said, when you understand that you don't want to take part in the stupid heaven no more, you migrate yourself right on out of that stupid heaven and try and do to get to the smart heaven, which is the the one that one that we should always try to migrate to, and be, because yes, those those are heavens that uh, we ourselves have been um, guided by, and we are. As people don't know that, yes, that's just certain words that the God used to take you there. And by doing certain little words, then we can understand, oh, well, I don't have to be over here in the stupid heaven doing the stupid things or the evil or the unwise and the dumb things. You understand? <clears throat> the valley of stupor is always... Full. It's, it's, it's just like, say, for instance, you heard this, an expression, there's a, a stairway going up to heaven, mm -hmm. but there's a highway to hell. Mm -hmm. Why come the highway? How come there's a big old highway for hell and there's only a little <laughs> stairway going? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That should give you some indication to know. Yeah, well, the highway to heaven ain't, I mean, the, the stairway to heaven is not as wide as the highway. But damn, they got a whole big highway they got going to hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if everybody goes on the, on the uh, highway going to hell, then you can see the one that's going, that's climbing. Because to climb up from it means that, yeah, no, I ain't going to participate in that jump with you. Yeah, you know, I walk through the ballet of the shadow of death. I ain't going to fear you. <laughs> so I ain't gonna be over there trying to do nothing with you. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yes, you can stay away from it because you don't have to participate in it. Uh -huh. And just like say, I just do, do remember some time um, ago when I was young that um, I was walking down the street with a young fellow that I knew and we'd grown up for a while and then all of a sudden uh, we get about a block and a half away from our home and he decides that he wants to rob the guy coming up the street. And I didn't know nothing about it. So here he goes, to, uh, you know, robbing this guy. Well, I first one said, wow, I can't believe this. <laughs> I accused him of one of them words there. I can't believe this. <laughs> robbing this <dude. laughs> Uh -uh. <laughs> and then we were right around here in our neighborhood, and I'm saying, will I be a part of this? Well, first I had to separate myself from it, because yeah, I, I ran across the street and said, man, I don't know this nigga. <laughs> 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 if you come back up the street and want to kill somebody or whatever, 
I'll be coming looking for me because no, I was not a part of this. I ain't gonna take part of this. So I had to first separate myself from it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In order for me to separate myself, yeah, I had to go across the street and then even announce to him, man, I do not know this nigga. I, I am not a part of what he is doing. Mm-hmm. To let you know that. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, yeah, I would call the police or something like that, uh, but uh, the thing is, at that particular time, no, you could not uh, get me to become a part of something that, like I said, I could get my body or cause bodily harm to me over some stupid that he did. Mm-hmm. And here you going to wait uh, until you got a block away, a block and a half away from where you live, mm-hmm. right in your own neighborhood. So how dumb is that? That's stupid. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Stupid things to the people. Mm-hmm. Stupid things happen to them. And like I said, they try and drag you down with them. And like I said, there you have to first come to the knowledge that yeah, you either gonna get entwined with him through dumb, stupid stuff mm-hmm. that you don't want to be a part of or don't want to take part in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But see, it's up to you. you had, I, if I had stayed there and said, yeah, go ahead and rob that nigga. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. go ahead and take his money. Mm-hmm. Take his watch. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. then I would have been right there on an, an accessory. Yep. yep. But I had to first identify and let him know that, no, I was not a see, part of this at that, all. That was a spirit. That was another spirit. <laughs> that was a no spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But... Like I said, yeah, there's a li- been a number of different things that happen in stupid ways that you got to say, mm, do I want to be a part of this? Am I going to get caught up in this? Mm-hmm. And if you go and get yourself caught up in stupid mess, you can get killed over that mm-hmm. stupid mess. That's, my, that's the main thing, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's up to you to first clear yourself and get away from or she would say, yes, you can get away from it because basically you don't have to participate. And when you don't participate in that, then, like I said, you clear yourself from all the guilt that's going to come down. And when the, when they do get called or brought to justice, they ain't going to be coming for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Because uh, that's how I'll say it. There are certain things that... Uh, should we say through the society we will not allow and it does not allow for you to be walking around belligerent and indignant and and all this and um, like I said even for females um, somebody th- thought of raping you they didn't want to go through the time, trouble of winding you and dining you and uh, taking you out this place and that place and and uh, walks on the beaches and things of this nature before they finally get them some Mm P-U-S-S-Y. But the thing is, you know, they still after the objective and and they don't want to wait that long. Mm -hmm. So they go ahead and take it and and tell them, look here, I'm just going to take me some and boom. Which in actuality... He married him for a few minutes and said, I'm going to get a divorce, you know, now that I got a nut from you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to divorce you right away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because people don't consider an intercourse a marriage, but that is really a marriage. When you go to bed with somebody like that, then uh, you don't realize that you actually have married someone. But when you, and the females consider it a marriage. Whether we know it or not, because she, 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 if she have any scruples about herself, she's going to say or let you know that no, she don't want you screwing with nobody else, and she will claim your penis as her own personal property. Uh-huh. She, you ain't, you can't claim her vagina as your personal property, but she can claim your penis as her own personal property. Uh-huh. You understand? Uh-huh. She see you talking with another female, and that is somebody trying to get at her personal property. Okay. There ain't going to be none of that going on. That's why you will, you will see what come out of them. It's called B-I-T-C-H. Uh, uh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? All right. Well, let's well I'm saying certain things you see happening in the society, yeah. you can define whether this is good or whether it's evil. Okay. Because... 
you have the ability to discern, yeah, well, this is going to lead me to goodness or this is going to lead me to badness. If you can't tell the difference, then you're going to know you high. You know you over there in, in the valley of stupor and you ain't got enough sense to come out of Babylon. And you know, Babylon just means confusion. Okay. You ain't got enough sense to come out of confusion so that you can live a, a, a better life. Okay. Well, that means that you're going to live a, a, a better life when you separate yourself from the Valley of Stupor. Okay. You well, understand? Like that. Well, well we, did, we, we, we had a good session today mm -hmm. and with Mr. William Jackson. We're going to part, part two uh, of William Jackson and he'll talk more about his uh, very good knowledge that can help you out in the future and prosper you for your endeavors. And like I said, a lot of people know he got a long time. Living, he did a lot of stuff for areas. He did a lot of for community. He had did a lot of study and done a lot of different stuff areas. And this is very interesting stuff. You get continue to the next segment of William Jackson on his spiritual knowledge of areas. And remember, don't be in the stupor. Get out that stupor because stupid people get stupid things done to them. <laughs> okay, kid. Claude Jones presents. Have a nice day. Happy New Year. Yo, E. Yo, man, how's it going down there? Oh, man, it's not too good. I mean, it's hard, hard to get anybody to, to, to walk away. It's not, it's not that good, man. It's kind of bad. Well, you know, man, you picked the last straw, man. You know, you stuck down there, man. You stuck down there. You got, you got to get some talent. You got to try to find. Man, I don't know about that. I mean, I'd rather just, you know, give up on it and just come on back to New York, man. I don't, I don't know about Oklahoma. It's just, they don't want to, they don't want to, I can't help it. I don't know what to do. Yo, no, yo, you, you get, you, you think of something. You're very creative, E. You're very creative. Yo, I gotta go, man. Peace. Alright. Good luck, good luck, man. Man, I need it. <laughs> what? Well, oh, sh hi, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Claude Jones. And, uh, well, basically, you see, we're trying to find talent in Oklahoma. Me and some partners got together. You know, New York is congested with rappers and singers. But I'm looking for certain individuals in other states. And somehow Oklahoma came up, because we don't know nobody from Oklahoma really came out really big. I don't know. So Eric, De Eric Deiraz picked the last straw. So he had got to go to Oklahoma. And he was trying to find talent. So I'm going to see what he can come up with and in our boot camp and see can they, can they really, really cut the mustard in Oklahoma. Could they really do what they got to do in Oklahoma and find some talent and see what they could do on the boot camp. But to the boot camp, they're easy. There goes a lot of trials and tribulations from the boot camp for the weekend to see are you worthy to be part of the boot camp. So, I got some clips here. I'm going to let you show, see for yourself. You let me know, audience, how you like the clips you got. And do you think you'd be worthy in Oklahoma to go on a boot camp? Just watch the show. Let your finger snap, uh -huh. relax a little nah, nah, bit, nah, nah. get your feet to stand. This is Your voice is your only instrument, use it, use it. Welcome to Boot Camp, and I'm your host, Eric DeReyes. This is the show that showcases talent from all over the nation, and we start off right here in Oklahoma. So stay with us, and watch what we have in store for you. This is the show where we take some lucky Oklahoman and we put them through hip hop boot camp, music boot camp, and we're gonna send them through a series of tasks and we're gonna give them a prize. $1,000 in cash and $1,000 in studio time. And you get to watch. And we're back. This is Boot Camp. I'm your host, Eric DeReyes. And basically what we do here is we send artists through a series of tests in order to get a ultimate prize. So we scoured Oklahoma looking for talent and basically did some interviews. And this is how it went. Take a look. Another edition of Boot Camp and I'm here with... Crystal. Crystal, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm just fine. Listen, uh, this is a, a competition for Boot Camp for $1,000. Uh, in cash and a thousand dollars in studio time. Tell us a little bit about what you're gonna do to get that prize. I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna dance. Okay. So how long have you uh, been doing this singing and dancing thing? 
So I've been doing it for a pretty couple of years. So I haven't really been doing, I'm not a real big stage person, but I do it myself. You think you can give us a little taste of what you can do? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can. All right, well go ahead, hit, us, hit a little note for me. <clears throat> It's a little early in the morning for Crystal, I guess. But um, she talked a little bit more, and uh, we kind of went through the interview a couple times because she couldn't quite grasp, you know, the concept of an interview. So here's a little bit more from Crystal. So do you have any recorded songs that we can listen to? Uh, on my phone. No, I mean songs that you recorded. CD. Okay. I said, what you, what do you mean? Do I have to sing again? No, you could do it in just yes or no question. Okay. All right, I don't know about this candidate, but you know, there's really something about her. Really something about her. You know, I don't know if she can sing, but I know she's feeling real good right now. Do you have any recordings? Do you have anything recorded? I see that Crystal is having a hard time grasping the concept of an interview still. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to get her to sing. Let's see what happens. We're back. Now, after hearing that rendition of whatever song that was, I thought she was going to do something original. I'm kind of thinking Crystal's not going to fare so great in this competition. What do you think? Anyway, it is an interview, so we continue to ask questions. Look what happens next. What's the point of asking all these questions if it's just an interview just for a boot camp? Excuse me? Say that again? Uh, why are you asking all these extra questions, sir? <laughs> because it's an interview, Crystal. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next interview. There's a local guy around here called Bryce, and he uses the studio quite frequently. Uh, he, he does a little rap. He goes by the name Be Easy. So we're going to have an interview with Bryce. And uh, you tell us what you think about Bryce and if he's a good candidate for the show. Check it out. Okay. Uh, where are you from, Bryce? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. How long do you uh, think that this is a, a place that produces, you know, a lot of talented people uh, worldwide? Talent, yes. As far as hip-hop goes, 